It would not be an exaggeration to say that without Sakamoto Ryoma, Japan would not be what it is today. And welcome to Let's Ask Shogo. Out of the hundreds of famous people in Japanese history, there is one man that is especially super popular in Japan. He is Sakamoto Ryoma. I've met many people telling me that he is their most favorite historical figure, and some surveys say that he was the second most popular among the high school students in 2020. But I believe you have two questions in your mind now. Why is Sakamoto Ryoma so popular? And who the heck is Sakamoto Ryoma in the first place? Interestingly enough, despite his super fame in Japan, I've never met or talked with anyone overseas about him before. So today, I will briefly explain about the life of Sakamoto Ryoma and what he achieved. Also in the latter part of the video, I will talk about the three major reasons why he is so famous in Japan. By watching this video, you'll be able to learn more about one of the top five most famous historical figures in Japan, and will be able to enjoy talking about history with Japanese people. By the way, I like to make more videos like this one where I focus on the history of a single person, so please let me know in the comments who you'd like me to talk about next. In this channel, you can take a closer look at Japanese traditional culture, tips on travel in Kyoto, and social problems in Japan. So learners and lovers of Japanese language and culture, be sure to subscribe to enjoy more content. Nihon no yuake wa chikaize yo. First, I will briefly explain about the historical background of the time when Sakamoto Ryoma was alive. In fact, the era in which he lived was an incredibly turbulent time in the 19th century, known as Bakumatsu, the end of the Edo period. The Tokugawa family, which dominated the Sengoku War era, ruled Japan peacefully for more than 250 years, over 15 generations. Such a miracle was possible due to the very strict political system laid out by the Tokugawa shogunate. They restricted freedom of religion, clearly divided the social ranks of people according to occupation, and restricted foreign travel and trade. However, in 1853, this absolute authority finally came crashing down. The navy led by Commodore Perry of the United States visited Edo with the newest warships and weapons and ordered Japan to open its borders to the world. They were hunting whales for their oil near the oceans of Japan, and they wanted to use Japanese ports as a supply point for food and water. Facing America's overwhelming military power, the shogunate was helpless, and they made a clearly unequal treaty that allowed the US to freely use their ports. This event threw the entire country into a state of chaos. In many parts of Japan, terrorist activities began to be carried out by those aiming to destroy the cowardly shogunate and establish a new government. Among them, the Choshu clan, located in present-day Yamaguchi Prefecture, was especially strong in its position to the shogunate and caused various violent incidents. At first, the shogunate side had the advantage, but later, the Satsuma clan in Kagoshima Prefecture and the Tosa clan in Kochi Prefecture joined the movement to overthrow the shogunate. Eventually, the samurai government was disassembled, and a new Meiji government was established. This is how the 700 years of the samurai era came to an end, and Japan was modernized and westernized. So where does Sakamoto Ryoma fit into this tale of the end of the Edo period? Let's move on to the next chapter. Then next, let's take a look at how Sakamoto Ryoma lived through this turbulent time by breaking it down into four main turning points. One, the impact of the US battleships. Two, apprenticed to a shogunate official. Three, entrepreneurship and the Sacho Alliance. Four, the restoration of the imperial rule and assassination. One, the impact of the US battleships. Sakamoto Ryoma was born in Kochi Prefecture in 1835 as the youngest son of a merchant's family. He started learning swordsmanship around the age of 14 
and his talented skills led him to go to Edo to train at a more advanced environment at the age of 19. The same year, he was enrolled in one of the three major dojos in Edo. Ryoma was assigned to guard the coast where Perry and his battleships arrived. Sakamoto Ryoma had actually witnessed one of the greatest events of Japanese history with his own eyes. At first, he was determined to fight the foreign countries head on if any wars were to happen. However, he soon realized that was not a good idea. After talking with a man named Kawata Shoryo, a painter who knew a lot about foreign countries. He was the one who compiled the story of John Manjiro, a Japanese man who lived in America for 11 years, into a book. Sakamoto Ryoma understood that Japan would be absolutely defeated if it fought foreign countries without having bigger ships and trained men. Japan did not have a strong navy because they had long restricted overseas trade and travel. Believing that Japan must be changed by the people and not by the unreliable shogunate, he joined a group and left his clan at the age of 28. At that time, it was a terrible crime to leave your clan without permission. In today's world, it would be like fleeing to another country without a passport. Sakamoto Ryoma had ambitions that he wanted to accomplish, even if he had to commit such a crime. 2. Apprenticed to a shogunate official. He toured the clans willing to overthrow the shogunate, and eventually became apprenticed to Katsu Kaishu, the shogunate's warship commander. Hold on, an apprentice of a shogunate official? Didn't Nyoma not trust the shogunate? This is one big mystery, but some say that he initially visited with the intention of killing Katsukaishu, but then fell in love with his excellence. Others say that he was willing to become an apprentice from the start, regardless of whether Katsukaishu was from the shogunate or not. In any case, I think that Katsukaishu is also amazing how he actually accepted a criminal that suddenly came charging into his place. He must have felt that Sakamoto Ryoma had a lot of potential. Katsukaishu was ordered by the shogunate to protect the Osaka Bay from the sea. And as a part of this order, he built a naval training center. Sakamoto Ryoma accompanied him on these projects and studied at his private school, which was built alongside the training center. 3. Entrepreneurship and the Sacho Alliance Everything seemed to be going smoothly for Ryoma, but the situation will change drastically from here. The Ikedaya incident occurred in 1864 when the Shinsengumi discovered and destroyed a group of terrorists who had a terrible plan to set fire in Kyoto and kidnap the emperor. Unfortunately, it was revealed that some of these criminals were from Katsukaishu's training center. This angered the shogunate, and both the training center and the private school were forced to close. Sakamoto Ryoma had nowhere to go, but he was managed to be protected by the Satsuma clan in Kagoshima Prefecture. There, he utilized his experience and knowledge to establish a trading company called Kamiyama Shachu, the very first stock company in Japan. The Kamiyama Shachu was a unique organization with a shipping business, a navy, and an institution for training in navigation. In January 1866, Ryoma used this organization to succeed in the Satsuma Choshu Alliance and brought the Satsuma and Choshu clans together, which at that time were very unfriendly. It is easy to say with words that the alliance was a success, but the historical significance of this event is tremendous. As I mentioned in the beginning, both the Satsuma and Choshu clans had the ambition to overthrow the shogunate and establish a new government. But in fact, the Satsuma clan, when they were not yet shifted to overthrowing the shogunate, had once been ordered by the shogunate to suppress the Choshu clan. The Choshu clan had always held a grudge against the Satsuma clan for this. However, Sakamoto Ryoma rearranged a cooperative relationship between Satsuma and Choshu clans by establishing trade in weapons and food supplies. Thus, with the bond between the two most powerful clans, the people's side finally had enough power to defeat the shogunate. From there, Ryoma joined hands with the Tosak clan with their request, which is his original clan that he ran away from illegally. The Kamiyama Shachu changed its name into Kaiyentai 
and became the organization of Gyoma's home clan. For the restoration of the imperial rule and assassination. The Satsuma and Choshu clans, which have been gaining strength thanks to Sakamoto Ryoma, were thinking of destroying the shogunate by force. However, the Tosa clan and Sakamoto Ryoma disagreed and proposed several measures to the shogunate, seeking a way to settle things peacefully. One of them, the Taisei Hokan, the restoration of the imperial rule, was accepted by the shogunate, and they actually returned the power to the imperial court and was disassembled. Then, just one month after the restoration of the imperial rule was realized, Sakamoto Ryoma was assassinated by someone on his 33rd birthday. The truth about his assassination is still unknown, and is one of the biggest mysteries of Japanese history. The most popular theory says it was the local police organization that did it, but others suggest it was the men of the Satsuma or Choshu clan who wanted to start a war, or even his mentor, Katsukaishu, who didn't like Ryoma's attitude after he left Edo. But in any way, Sakamoto Ryoma, who worked hard for the future of Japan, was unable to see the end of how his country would proceed. Now that you've understood the story of Sakamoto Ryoma's life, Let's take a look at the three main reasons why he is so famous and popular among Japanese people. 1. He greatly changed the course of history. 2. His friendly character. 3. He was featured in novels and TV series. 1. He greatly changed the course of history. First of all, there is no doubt that he is one of the men who contributed most to the modernization of Japan. Without the Kayentai, Japan would not have had access to the latest weapons and technology and may have missed out on modernization. Without the Sacho Alliance, Japan would not have been able to defeat the shogunate and the civil war would have been prolonged. Lastly, the proposal to the shogunate for the return of power helped to minimize the damage caused by the war. If Japan had weakened too much due to civil battles, there is even a possibility that Japan could have been attacked by foreign countries and turned into a colony. It would not be an exaggeration to say that without Sakamoto Ryoma, Japan would not be what it is today. 2. His friendly character Although Sakamoto Ryoma accomplished many great deeds, it is said that he was actually a man with many weaknesses. Being the youngest of his siblings, he was told that he was a failure and would not accomplish much as a child. However, he had never hid any of his weaknesses to others, and he also had an overwhelming amount of ambition, empathy, and compassion. Otherwise, Katsukaishu would not have taken him as an apprentice even though he was a criminal. The Satsuma clan would not have protected him, and the Sacho Alliance would not have been formed to his credit. The fact that he was such a character that everyone can easily relate to is another reason why he is loved. 3. He was featured in novels and TV series. Just like the Shinsengumi and the 47 Ronin, various novels were written about Sakamoto Ryoma in the 20th century. And even today, there are many TV series and movies featuring him. One of the most famous is Ryoma ga Yuku by Shiba Ryotaro. This novel is also available in English, so please check out the description box. The end of the Tokugawa Shogunate was a turbulent time, which made it easy to write a dramatic story. But even without that, Sakamoto Ryoma's life was so dramatic to the point that it seems like fiction. Although he was originally the youngest son of a local merchant, he was so determined to change Japan that he broke the law to travel around the country and became an apprentice to a shogunate official. He never slowed down and continued to learn new things and take on new challenges, and until the very end, he continued to think about how to solve domestic problems as peacefully as possible. And above all, the mysterious end of his life. Of course, it has been pointed out that there are many false stories and events that have been overstated due to his excessive fame. But nevertheless, Sakamoto Ryoma is a hero that Japan is proud of. Then lastly, today's conclusion. 
Sakamoto Ryoma was born in Kochi Prefecture in 1835 as the youngest son of a merchant's family. Thanks to his talent in swordsmanship, he trained at a famous dojo in the capital Edo when he was 19 years old. At the time, he witnessed the arrival of Perry and his battleships with his own eyes and realized that Japan must have a stronger navy in order to survive. He illegally escaped his clan to become an apprentice of Katsukaishu, who was a shogunate's warship commander. He learned and trained at Katsukaishu's naval training school and private school. After these schools were closed, he was protected by the Satsuma clan and there established Kameyama Shachu, Japan's first stock company. Using this organization, he succeeded in the Satsuma Choshu Alliance, and the people's side finally had enough power to defeat the shogunate. However, he wanted to settle things as peacefully as possible, and he proposed the restoration of imperial rule, which was later accepted by the shogunate. Although he achieved many accomplishments, he was assassinated by someone on his 33rd birthday. The three main reasons why Sakamoto Ryoma is so popular are 1. He greatly changed the course of history. 2. His friendly character. 3. He was featured in novels and TV series. It would not be an exaggeration to say that without Sakamoto Ryoma, Japan would not be what it is today. So that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. If this video helped you to deepen your understanding towards the Bakumatsu period, please hit the like button to help me boost this video to more people. And my goal is to achieve 1 million subscribers by January 2023, so your help would mean a lot. And please check out our sub-channel and membership through the link inside the description box. Thanks again, and I'll see you in my next video. So Sakamoto Ryoma is definitely really, really popular in Japan, yes. But um, the other people who have ranked in the ranking among the high school students I introduced in the beginning, right? Um, number one is obviously, by the way, very obviously it's Oda Nobunaga. Yeah, Oda Nobunaga is just so famous. I mean, what he actually did in history is literally really, really amazing. But you know, all the video games and anime and such, he's just featured so much, right? So there's Oda Nobunaga, and obviously, by the way, Totem Hideyoshi and uh, Tokugawa Yasu. These two are in it. And then Sakamoto Ryoma is also in the in the list. And depending on the year, the other person, the top five, right? The other, the four are like, um, are always there. Yeah, these four are always there. And the last person, tends to change depending on the generation. And it seems in 2020, it was actually Himiko. Do you guys know about who Himiko is? Himiko is actually, um, she is she is believed to be, she is uh, a person from the ancient Japan period, in the Yayoi period actually. So some theories even say that she didn't even exist in the first place, but there's a lot of mysteries behind her. And there's actually um, some comedians that actually uh, make fun of that period, you know. Well, not not make fun of it, but you know, um, do the movements, or know, just do the fashion of that period. And I guess some people do, do that kind of stuff. And there's just so many mysteries about Himiko. So Himiko was actually included. And in 2021, it was interesting how Akechi Mitsuhide, um, he was the person who um, assassinated Oda Nobunaga in the Honnoji incident. Yes, he was one of the subordinates. Is that the right word? Yeah, subordinates of Oda Nobunaga. Yeah. So I think I'll definitely make a video talking about why the three uh, Sengoku warlords, the three most famous Sengoku warlords, Oda Nobunaga, Toyota Hideyoshi, and Tokugawa Yes, these three are why they're so popular and famous. And also, I'd I think I will try to make a video talking about Himiko too. I've actually received a few messages talking about Himiko, so I'll definitely talk about these people here. And if there's anyone else you'd like me to talk about, please again, let me know in the comments.